salatu ve selamu ala seyyidil mursalin seyyidina ve nebiyyina ve mevlana Muhammed ve ala alihi ve ashabi ecmain ve kad kala Allahu Teala fi kitabil aziz ba'da a'udhu billahi mineşşeytanir racim bismillahirrahmanirrahim ve la tahsabenne lezine kutilu fi sabidillahi emvata bel ahya'un inda rabbihim yurzakun ferihine bima atahumullahu min fadlih ve yestabşirune billezine lem yelhaqu bihim ella khawfun aleyhim ve la hum yahzanun sadakallahul azim rabbi şahli sadri ve yassirli amri vahlul uqdatem min lisani yafqahu kavli Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuh. Elhamdülillah we are in this great month of Muharram. The month in which the Prophet sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ordered us to fast and inshallah in the coming days we will be fasting the 9th, the 10th or the 10th and the 11th. But as we all are acutely aware of a great event that took place during this month. A month that was, this event was shown to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam in his lifetime that this is what is going to happen in the years to come. So when we look at Surah Ibrahim there's an ayah that relates to Nabi Musa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and it says وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ and remind them of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Karbala as we know it, is an event which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and many of our distractors will tell us, why don't you speak of this battle and this event? The event of Karbala was in was with the knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa and therefore we use this period to reflect on the household of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam before I continue it is important that we inform our family members of the household of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are part of us. We should inform, it should be taught at every institution, whether it's a one-year program, two-year program, six-year program, seven-year program, somewhere in the curriculum, there should be a part where we speak of the Ahlu Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, in the past few days, we have had the opportunity to listen to members of the household of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And inshallah tonight, I will be discussing Abu Fadl Abbas, Ibn Ali, Ibn Ali, Ali Abi Talib, Al-Hashimi, Al-Qurashi. And I think I'll be looking at, looking at some of his Laqab and kunyas, and then insha'Allah we will be able to understand who this great individual was. Many people in the Middle East may not know the other household of the Ahlul Bayt, other members of the Ahlul Bayt, but Abu Fadl al Abbas, they definitely know something about him. Firstly, we go back to Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam. We know that when our beloved mother and sister Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam was living, she was his only wife. Upon her demise, Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam then married a number of women, not just another one, at least another four he married. And one of them First thing, he went to Aqil ibn Abi Talib and he was a genealogist. He knows people's backgrounds, you know, where they crossed over with which tribes. He knew their whole 
History was an expert in it. And Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam goes to him and tells him, I want you to choose me a wife. And then he guides Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam and he looks at this tribe, Al-Kilab tribe, and he said, marry this woman, Fatima Hizam Al-Kilabi or Al-Kilabiya. Because Sayyidina Ali wanted someone where the breed would be strong. It will be a, a person with chivalry, a person with strength, a person being endowed with many other qualities. And doing this, he marries a woman by the name of Fatima. And it is narrated that she came to him and told him that I want you to change my name. This is just one of the, the narrations, to change my name. Because you are going to call me Fatima, and the mother of Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein are called Fatima, and he doesn't want to, she did not want to create any disturbance in their lives. So he called her Ummul Banin. So she's known as Ummul Banin. In some reports, they said that was her name. Ummul Banin would mean the mother of the sons. Now, this is where Sayyidina Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, starts off. And from there, they have a few children. And amongst them is known as Al-Abbas. Now, Abbas is a very common name. But the root word of Abbas is from the word from the surah, we all know, Abbas wa Tawalla. It means to frown. So, Abbas would mean that people will frown when they look at him. In the way he conducts himself, the way he interacts, the way he is on the battlefield, the way he is at service. And therefore he was called Al-Abbas and he had a son by the name of Fadl and therefore he was called Abu Fadl. Fadl would mean, of course, it's a very positive word, means one of the meanings could be goodness. Now, so he's better known as Abu Fadl Al-Abbas. But he had many other kunyas and laqabs. And to mention a few of them, um, and I think through that, we will be able to uh, understand this great personality better. Firstly, of course, he was born in the year 26 Hijri. 26 Hijri he was born. That's 16 years after the physical moving of the Prophet ﷺ from the dunya, or from the face of the earth. And he lived a short life of 34 years. But let's look at what did he accomplish in this short of years of 34 years. Now coming back to his kunya, he was known as, as Hafiz Mahmoud mentioned, Kamru Bani Hashim. The moon, that means the, 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 the light of the Banu Hashim or Bani Hashim, if you say it properly. How did that come about? Firstly, I'm just going a bit, not in sequence. He was reared in the house of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was nurtured there. He was given tarbiyah there. That's his, where he comes from. So when the Battle of Safin took place, when Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam, fought with Muawiyah in the Battle of Safin. He was 14 years old and he partook at that battle. 14. Now today, if we have a 14 year old son, how much can we ask from him? He was 14 years old. And it is narrated by Al-Khawarizmi Al-Hanafi that Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam asked him to to take off his clothes and say, Ali put it on in that battle. And say, Ali, of course, was at his best in the Battle of Safin. And Imam uh, Abu Abbas, Abu Fadl al Abbas, was a hero in that battle. And therefore, he was called Kamru Bani Hashim, the light, the shining star of the Bani Hashim. Then another name that he's called by, he's called a saqa or a saqi. Means 
the person that carries water to people. Now as we will see later on, a few days before Karbala, he goes and he gets some water for Imam al Hussein and the entire members and, his, and all his followers. He's also known as Babul Hussein. Babul Hussein. The door to Imam Hussein. His father, Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was known as the Prophet وسلم, said, Ana Madinatul Ilm. I am the city of knowledge. Wa Ali Babuha. And Ali is his, the doorway to it. Here, Abu Fadl al Abbas is called Babul Hussein, the doorway to Imam al Hussein. And we will see later on how this fits him. Another title that is also known by is Is, is, is known as Sahib al Kirba. Kirba would also mean like a water skin where you put in water. Because on the day of Karbala on the 10th, he had a container with water with him. And he had many other lakabs and kunyas, nicknames to it. Now having said that, he first comes to prominence in the Battle of Safain. And after Sayyidina Ali passes on, he pays allegiance to Imam al-Hassan. And thereafter, of course, when the Umayyad dynasty set in, he was very close to Imam al hussein Now, He's also known as Babul Hawaij. Now, of course, those, and inshallah we are correct, that go accept Wasila. And it's recorded when you go to his maqam in Karbala and you make dua there at his maqam. Yes, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at his maqam, insha'Allah, your du'as get accepted. So, having spoken so far of him, uh, we move on, we know the history of the Umayyads having deposed Imam al Hassan and took charge, and thereafter Muawiyah renegated on what he had promised that after him the leadership will come back, you know, to the Prophet's household or the Ummah will decide. And he appointed his son Yazid Lanatullahi Alayhi. We can curse him, he's not a Sahaba, so we are free to curse him. And I always do that. Okay. The plot, we know the plot started already in Medina to Munawwara. Where Yazid sent people to go to Medina and ask Imam Hussein to give bay'ah. And that is when Imam Hussein then in the middle of the night took his family and Abu Fadl Abbas joined them to go to Makkah and then from Makkah to Karbala. In the meantime, inshallah in the coming days, whoever will be speaking after me will give us more details on Karbala. And Yazid and all his lieutenants, his ministers, had prepared a big army. In some reports, it said that this army was 4,000 people. And we know that the household of the Ahlul Bayt, of Imam al Hussein, there were only 72. So, what happens here? Abu al Fadl al Abbas becomes the right hand man of um, Imam al Hussein. Therefore he's called Babu al Hussein. Sayyidina so, you know, Hussein alayhi salam consulted him at every point. 
uh, everywhere, consulted him, what is happening, take information from him, share it with him, and in that way. Now in Yazid's camp, we have Ibn Ziyad, we have Shimr Ibn Zi, Joshan, and we have uh, Umar uh, bin Sa'ad. These are the key people in the camp of Yazid, La'natullahi Ali. So what they did, they came to him, no, the first they sent a message, to, they come to the compound of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and, the, and I remember that Shamar bin Zi Joshan and Abu al-Fadr Abbas are connected somewhere in line belonging to the same tribe. So they come there to the camp and they say they want to speak to their brothers. And Imam al Hussein gave them permission, says, no, although they are Farsiks, they are transgressors, go and, and see what they've got to offer or what they've got to say. Now here we need to understand that Imam al Hussein here is trying to keep family ties because they are the families. And they go to, and they make an offer. And this offer was repeated by different people approaching them to say, you people are safe. We give you amnesty. But move away from Hussein. Move away from him. Don't kill yourself because of him. Move away. And their response was obviously, they said, we don't need your am amnesty at all. Curse to your amnesty. They were determined, they were steadfast to stay in the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. As the army of Yazid now strengthens, doing more spying and looking at the movement, a message is sent to Ibn Ziyad that Hey, to surround this camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is not sufficient. It's not sufficient. We need to cut the water supply. We need to strangle them. Let them die of thirst. So on this, when they started that, the household of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, they were needing water. And they were getting thirsty. And they were screaming out, Atash, we are thirsty. Abu Fadl al-Abbas, what a colleague, go to the Euphrates to get water. And of course the whole enemy camp, the enemies of Allah are there. And they told him, you can take water, you can drink here, but you are not going to take water to Hussein. You can drink the water. And of course Abu Fadl al-Abbas, being a very strong person and very swift with his, uh, with his sword, managed to come from there on the seventh day and of course bring water to the camp of Imam Hussein. On the ninth or the tenth night, now we know we, our night starts earlier, right? Our night starts, uh, we, we, our day starts by, by night and then the day. On the tenth day, um, Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam, Sayyidina Imam Hussain alayhi salam then gathers everyone. He gathers them all. And he tells them, after saying, Amma ba'd, fa inni la a'alam ashaban awfa, wala sabran min ashabi, wala ahla bayt, uh, abar wa awsal min ahli bayti. فَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرَ أَنِّي خَيْرًا فَكَدْ أَعْزَرْتُمْ وَآوَنْتُمْ وَالْقَوْمُ لَا يُرِيدُونَ غَيْرِي وَلَوْ قَتَلُونِي لَمْ يَبْتَغُوا غَيْرِي أَحَدًا Basically, what is he telling them? That you people are the best of people. You are the best of companions. You have assisted me. You have helped me. But the قوم, referring to Yazid and his army, they don't want anyone besides me. And if they kill me, 
They won't go after anyone else. So on that night, Imam Hussein alayhi salam then gathered them together and said, you know, you may go in the darkness of night. You may leave me and you people must go. Save yourselves. What was the response? And of the people that were there now, Abu Fadl al-Abbas was the first to respond immediately. And of course his brothers were there and all the other members that were with Imam al Hussein alayhim salam they responded. And then he says in the words, he says, فَمَاذَا نَقُولْ لِلنَّاسِ إِذَا رَجَعْنَا What are we going to tell the people when we return to the people? إِنَّا تَرَكْنَا سَيِّدَنَا وَابْنَ سَيِّدِنَا وَعِمَادَنَا That we have abandoned our Sayyid, our Master, and the son of our Master, and our foundation we have abandoned. وَتَرَكْنَاهُ غَرْدًا لِلنَّبْرَ وَدَرِيعَةً لِلْرِمَاحِ وَجَزْرًا لِلْسِبَاءِ That we have left them at the, like a point, you know when you're shooting an arrow at a certain point, we have left him so the arrows can come to him. Or we have shield, made him a shield for spears to come towards him. Or we have left him to a beast animal to devour him. So what are, so they were very, very emphatic, very stern that they are not going to leave him. And Abu Fadl Abbas was the first spokesperson that evening. So we come to the 10th of Muharram. Again, they need water. And as you heard, our Hafiz Mahmoud has mentioned that. And therefore it's called a Saqi or a Saqqa. They needed water. The little Sukaina, the young girl, Aum Kulthum, Zainab, they were all, they were thirsty. And he was sent to go and get water. He goes to the Euphrates again. Of course, in some narration, he folds up a bag of water. Uh, you know, it's, uh, what do you call it, a uh, water skin bag. Like. And as he's coming back on his mount, the army of Yazid is all over there. And as he's coming, he was determined and pushing his way through. There was a palm tree, one person was behind the palm tree and chopped his, you know, uh, he did not see it coming, chopped his right hand off. And he carried on. And remember, I, may, I forgot to mention this, he was known as Hamilul Liwa, the, the flag bearer of Imam al Hussein. So, we, so he went with the flag, holding that flag up. That means we are here, we are still around. So coming back, after having lost one hand, he continued moving and keeping that flag up. And at another point, his other hand was cut off. And Imam Hussein from a distance <coughs> could see him coming. And he saw the flag was still up. And then they shot him with arrows. Now remember, we're talking of 4,000 people. And we don't know how many spears and arrows were shot towards him and how many reached him, how many didn't reach him. But anyway, he was shot in the eye, he was shot at the back, and when he came close to Imam Hussein, of course, uh, he passes on. So he was the second, after Imam Hussein, the second last person, or the last person before Imam Hussein to be killed in this battle. And thereafter, of course, the, the, the uh, enemies of Allah had the opportunity now to deal with whom they wanted to deal with, that was Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So if you look in a very brief way at this great personality, lived only for 34 years, and he was loyal, al-wafa, he was loyal 
to Imam Hussein as his father was loyal to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he was loyal to Imam Hussein and therefore again once again I say he was called Babul Hussein the door to Hussein now after he fell the enemies knew they can now come to Imam al Hussein and of course inshallah I think one of the speakers coming will definitely address that part of you know the uh, of Karbala so we must remember that we, we repeat we rehearse Karbala whenever the new year comes in it is important that we know that we cannot be like those distractors that feel as I said earlier that it is you know there are many other battles that took place this one was in the, with the knowledge of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes we should be happy of Karbala because it was that where the change came Imam Hussein alayhi salam and what his followers were bringing the deen back to us so we have to be happy we shouldn't be crying but I would say if you are alone you must shed a tear for on this day because the Rasul shed a tear on this day when he was told of the martyrdom of his grandson Hussein it was not just silent tears rolling down his cheeks it was audible that in, whom, in whose house he was Umm Salama's house when she heard the Prophet crying she ran in and she thought Imam Hussein, as a little boy, came to disturb him because he told her he's going to, he's going to have a slight nap and you know, not to allow anyone to come in. And suddenly she heard the Prophet ﷺ crying and she thought, oh, this little boy must have gone in there. And then he explains to her that he was, Jibril ex, uh, informed him of this great event where he's going to lose his grandson at the hands of so-called Muslims. So, once again, there are many personalities that take and play a role. As we heard last night, Zainab alayhi salam, and then we have Sajjad, you know, uh, his role also, and he was the main informant as to what happened in Karbala, as well as Zainab alayhi salam. They are the informants to tell us what took place during that period. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to, to remember the Ahlul Bayt, not just at Karbala, but it should be part of us, because they are the household of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa They are his household, and we need to know them. And also, for us to teach our children of the Ahlul Bayt and the struggle. And the struggle of the Ahlul Bayt did not stop at Karbala nor did the um, viciousness of the Yazidi army stop they continued for many decades after that killing, massacring and raping members of the Ahlul Bayt they continued for a very long time so it's important that we know that this, this history of our, uh, of our early Islam and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from me this, uh, this humble effort to bring to you some uh, information on Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam. So uh, we make a dua, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم ارزق زقنا حب أهل بيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اللهم ارزقنا حب أهل نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم واهدنا ووفقنا إلى الحق وإلى طريق مستقيم ببركة القرآن العظيم وبحرمة من أرسلته رحمة للعالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم 
وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين